So I've been working on making a frame for this painting that's behind me. And while that's a separate set of videos that are entitled Quilted Maple Frame, I uh, did a long segment with the domino while I was recording it. And the reason for it is that there were some specifics about how I had to do the dominoing of the, of the frame pieces that's different than normal. Normally you just use the frame, use the, the fence portion directly on the material that you're doing the dominoes. But in this case here, I had to do a little bit of a difference in order to get it to the reference surface I really wanted. So I, it was a relatively long segment for the frame video and I thought, well, this is probably useful in a lot more context. So that's why I've pulled it out as a separate video. It's not in the original frame one. You'll just suddenly see dominoes appear if you watch that series. So that's the context for the rest of this video and hopefully you'll find it useful. I know I've used this trick a couple times in other scenarios where it just made it so much easier to pick the reference surface I want and then set the domino uh, appropriately to that surface regardless of whether you could get to it directly or not. So I just finished cutting the rabbits into the frame so that we can put the picture. The portrait will be in here and then it'll be tacked on actually using the off cuts. Those are just gonna be placed here and then I'm gonna run some staples, some crown staples straight through here uh, to hold the picture in place. Now, what I need to do now is the joinery for the miter. Of course, miters are always those sneaky things that you don't just wanna glue this together and, and hope it's never gonna work, especially on a big picture like this. You won't even get it hung on the wall. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna put a domino in here. So the domino itself is gonna be installed going through it this like this. Now this happens to be an eight millimeter domino, which is very, very close to being a third of the size of the thickness where I'm gonna be putting it. And it turns out that if I use the registration pins that are on my domino, mine's the older one with the pins, now the new ones have paddles, but they should be at the same location. It turns out that if I use the pin to the outside edge and I plunge the hole right there, and you'll see this more in a close up when I do the operation, it turns out it's gonna, it's gonna place the domino just to the outside of the rabbit. So that'd be perfect. And if you look at the projection of a domino through it, there'll be about 3 eighths of an inch left on the thinnest portion back there. So we'll be fine there as well. So <clears throat> I could just place this down, put the fence onto the top and run the dominoes. That'd be really fast to do. And it would work fine in this case here. What I wanted to do though, is I thought this would be a good chance to show something I didn't show in like my domino review. And it's something where you might want to elevate the reference surface. Uh, this, was, this is like a perfect opportunity to show that, so that's why I want to do it here. What the point is, is that this is the reference surface I care about the most, this flat. If these beads don't line up absolutely perfectly, I can very easily sand those. Even though I've already painted them, uh, colored them, and finished them, I can very easily touch them up with the black dye, and then when I put the final coats of the finish, they'll be taken care of. So. Uh, I mean, the reason why these were pre-finished and pre-colored is simply because it made the assembly a little bit easier, and there's probably a hundred ways to do it. That's how I chose. So this is the surface that I care about the most, this middle part. So this is the reference I want to go off of, but there's no way I can put the domino fence on here because of these beads. So what I'm going to do is I have a scrap piece of sapili. I'm going to put this right there in the middle. Now, when I clamp this thing down, I'm going to put the top fence of the domino on this in order to, do, to plow the hole. So what this does is it allows it, if there's any variance on the back or any variance on the side, the way the beads, you know, remember I was just clamping those in place and pushing them down. It's possible that one might have scooted up or whatever. The point is I want this to be flush. So that's what we're going to do on here. I'll be able to show you in this film. So let me bring the camera in so you can see it more closely and then I'll, I'll describe how it works. So the key is I'm going to take a look at this thickness. Now this thickness happens to be 16 millimeters. So I want to be halfway down. So eight millimeters down is going to be the center point. So that's from the top surface down is eight millimeters. The thickness of this is 20 millimeters. I already measured that. So I need to go from the top of this to the center of the mortise is 28 millimeters. We're going to set that on this scale. Remember, this is the scale that shows the, the depth from the fence to the center of the mortise. This one here is a convenience scale that says if your material is this thick, it's gonna set it to the middle. So basically this one here is always double what's on here. So we're gonna set this one to 28 millimeters and then we're gonna set up the plunge. Now it doesn't have to be outrageously accurate because once I lock this in place, I'm gonna do all the mortises. So whether it's at 28 millimeters or 28 and a quarter or 27 and three quarters, 
no big deal. As long as I don't ever change this reference, we'll be fine. So now we'll tilt down the fence. And we're going to put this piece here on. And then for fun, I'm going to do this on this piece of offcut. Now this outside registration pin is going to go to this outside edge of the miter. You're going to put it there, push it up against the stock, and then of course you know firmly push down on this reference surface. And then we're going to do the plunge. Now these are 840 dominoes, so we're going to set it for a depth of 20, 20 millimeters. And I want the exact size. Now you don't change this unless the motor is running. So if for some reason I had it over here, I'd wait till I power it up and then I'd turn it over. It's done just like a clutch. Let's give it a try, see how this works. First thing you check, did it pop out? No. <laughs> to me, that's a little bit too high to the top. So I do want to actually lower that down. So I'm going to lower that down by an additional three millimeters. Which is very nearly at the limit. Alright, I have another piece of scrap here that we'll go ahead and try it out. Could do it on the same one, but why not when I have extra? Alright, now I'll try it again. Now that I like much better. 